Hey, welcome back everybody. And today it's Monday at noon. So we have another Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. I do these every live at noon. Thank you so much for joining me. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, for those of you that are catching me on replay, uh, you can't do this in the middle of the day. Maybe you're catching this a couple of days later at night. That's fine. I, I appreciate whenever you join, even on replay, hit me up in the comments with hashtag replay. Okay. Today, we are going to talk about, just to give you a sense, tease you a little bit here before we get started, we're going to talk about two very important steps that you have to take before you start selling as a freight broker or a freight agent, okay? So these are two very important steps you need to take before you start selling. We're going to dive into that. We're going to pull that all apart, um, and hopefully you're going to be able to garner some great information that's going to help you get more shipping clients quicker, faster, with less frustration aggravation and delay. Okay. So, but before we do that, uh, let's welcome a few people. We got a bunch of people joining us, uh, not only on Facebook, but on YouTube, because I stream this live at both locations. So let's do a quick shout out. Let me know the city and state you're logging in from. I'll give you, I'll try to give you a shout out. So here's the agenda. We'll do some quick shout outs. Then we're going to do a training. Okay. We're going to talk about this train, this topic. Then I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm going to give away another shirt, another Freightpreneur shirt. Okay. So I'm going to give that away after the training. Um, and then we're going to do live Q and A as always, I'll stick around as long as I can to do some live Q and A. So that's the basic agenda of today. So if you can, and you have questions, stick around to the end. If you don't have questions and you're just trying to learn, stick around to the end because other people are going to ask a lot of questions that you forgot to ask and that you can benefit from. Okay. So hopefully that works out. All right, great. So let's do some shout outs really quick. Welcome Ernest Berry uh, from Dallas, Texas. Paul Spates from Frisco, Texas. That, the Texas guys are always in the house right away. Kendrick uh, Taylor from Lakeland, Florida. Red uh, Army, Army Co. from Florida. Cove Springs, Florida. Kenneth from Hemet, California. Midgroup Dispatch from Florida. Shaquanza from uh, Atlanta. We got Shane Queen Wiley from uh, Lakeland, Florida. Muhammad from Cleveland. Mahu, wait, what? Mahmoud, I'm sorry, Mahmoud from uh, Lake Cleveland. I apologize if I murder your name or the city state where you're at. The type is very small, <laughs> so it's hard. Jeff from Arizona. Tatiana from Palmdale, California. Jeez, oh, now it just skipped, of course. Uh, bu, 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 bu. Corey Miller from Paragona, Utah. We got Jay Ward from Dallas. We got JT Tao from Sacramento, California. Joshua from Oregon. Tretius Bailey from Hampton, Georgia. Willie Clark from Fresno, California. Nicholas Curry from Texas. Uh, Sam Lipscomb from Dubuque, Colorado. Joshua from Medford, Oregon. Antonio from Ceres, California. Stacy Rodriguez from New Orleans, Louisiana. My wife is dying and beats me over the head at least once or twice a month. She wants to go to New Orleans, something fierce to visit. She's never been there. I've been there. She's never been there. She wants to go so bad. So um, I'm not going to tell her, Stacy, that you popped up in my feed today. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nakia from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Marquetta from Jackson, Tennessee. Uh, Sada Basco from Atlanta, Georgia, Eric Val from Santa Clarita, California. we got a lot more and I thank you all for joining me. Okay. Whether you're on this live or on replay, I truly appreciate you being here. Time is by far the most valued commodity. So I don't want to waste yours. Okay. So I want to make sure this is valuable for you. Again, the agenda is simple. Today, we're going to talk about two very important steps that you need to take as a freight broker or freight agent before you start selling. We're also going to do a giveaway. I'm going to give away another Freightpreneur t-shirt. Um, you know, someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand, right? This is the, this is the favorite t-shirt that I've been giving away for, geez, it seems like a year now. And, um, and then we're going to do live Q&A, okay? So why don't we, why don't I talk a little bit about the giveaway? Hey, welcome, Yogesh Goswami, one of my favorite past students who's having a ton of success. So welcome, Yogesh. Thank you so much. Uh, so let's talk about the giveaway. I'm going to give away one of these shirts. If you want one of these shirts, listen carefully. Here's all you have to do. Number one, like the stream, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, that's the first thing. Hit the like button. Second, share the stream. So share it on Facebook, share it on Instagram, 
share it on, you know, wherever, Pinterest, uh, Twitter, wherever. You got to click the share button and share the stream somewhere with your network, okay? If you share the stream, then come back into this feed and in the comments below, type hashtag shared. That's how I know that you actually shared the stream. And that's what will qualify you to be a possible winner of the free t-shirt. Now, I'm only, only going to give away one today, but um, I'm going to pick one random winner like I do every week. And uh, if you shared the stream, if you like the stream and then you shared it, you potentially could win the shirt. It's absolutely free. I ship it out to you. You'll get it within about a week or so. And, um, and it's been very popular. I wear it almost every single week. Uh, I find myself wearing it even when I don't do the lives, which is quite comical. My wife asks me all the time, why are you wearing that shirt? Uh, and uh, I like it because, you know, I think of this as this is our community. It's Freight Broker Bootcamp, but it's really more the freightpreneur community, right? You guys are all looking to become freightpreneurs, either brokers or agents. And, you know, you're entrepreneurs, but, you, you know, the whole playoff of this is obviously that you're, you want to be an entrepreneur, but it's in the freight and logistics industry. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, anyway, okay, so for those of you that are sharing, here's what's going to happen. Share the stream. I'm going to do, I'm going to do the drawing after I get done with the lesson, after I get done with this concept that I talk about two very important steps that you need to take before you start selling as a freight broker or freight agent. But all you got to do is like the stream, share it, and then come back in here and hit hashtag share. It's an honor system. I can't go out and check and see if you shared the stream right now. I don't have time. I don't want to waste everybody's time but it's an honor system. Okay. So I don't care where you share it, share it on social. If you can't share it on social, tag three people in the comments. Okay. Tag three people in the comments of this live stream and I'll consider that a share. Okay. That's another option that you can have. Okay. All right. So let me grab a quick drink and then we're going to get the ball rolling. Okay. Is everybody ready to get started? Who wants to know these two, these two steps? Who wants to know these two steps? I mean, you're here, but are you really here? I want to make sure you're paying attention. I want to make sure you're ready. I need a little water. What's really cool is I actually got a massage this morning. I have a massage therapist that I've been going to for years, but she changed locations and now it's just not convenient. And so she asked me, she's like, well, do you want me to come to your house? And I'm like, uh, yeah. So this was the first day that she's come to the house and done the massage. So she did my massage. She did my wife's massage. It was amazing. So if I look a little sleepy, um, I apologize. I tried to caffeine up a little bit so that I had some good energy for you guys. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was kind of interesting. Sidetrack, but sorry about the sidetrack. But ultimately, all right, cool. So you guys are ready. I'm ready. So let's talk about this. Two steps that you need to take, very important steps you need to take as a freight broker or freight agent before you start selling. First, let me describe a scenario for you. You as a freight broker or freight agent are going to start selling your service, which means you're going to have to start calling and emailing and doing outreach to your niche market, whoever your prospects are. So there's a couple of scenarios here. The first scenario is uh, you call them up. And let's say, for example, you're fortunate enough in the first 15 to 30 seconds of that call to get their attention, right? You get their attention, which is one of the hardest parts of cold calling and cold outreach and, and developing rapport with clients is get that first 15 to 30 seconds, right? Let's assume you get their attention, okay? So they're going to give you then another couple of minutes to kind of present your pitch, right? And your idea and your concept and yourself. And let's say that that call ends with send me some information or send me over some rates. And it's a positive experience. It's, a, it's, a, it's what we would call a quality conversation. Okay? So that's scenario A. Scenario B is they say, hey, I'm not interested and they hang up the phone. That happens. Just so you know, that happens. It happens frequently because it's cold calling, right? The better you are at cold calling, the better you are at getting people's attention, the more likely that you are going to have success. That's part of the reason why I put together my whole freight broker sales accelerator program, right? So that sales accelerator program is going to be launching very soon. I'll tell you how you can get that later at the end here, but that's a big part of the reason why I put that together. Okay. So scenario A is you get their attention. You have a positive experience. You have a good quality conversation. It's the first conversation 
you've built a little bit of rapport, uh, you've got their attention, you've got their contact information, you've got their email, you've got some basic info, right? Now, the phone call hangs up. Here's what's going to happen the majority of the time. Fairly quickly, and sometimes almost instantly, after they get off the phone call with you, the first thing they're gonna do is go to Google. And they're going to Google your name and your company name. So for example, Joe Smith, XYZ Logistics. They're gonna to go to Google, they're gonna type that in, they're gonna hit return. Now in the best case scenario, what's gonna happen is the first two results that are gonna show up on, on the organic search for, for Google or Bing or whatever search engine is your name, your company, and two different websites. The first website is your company website. The second website is your LinkedIn profile. It's a link to your LinkedIn profile, okay? The reason why that's important and the reason why I stress that you have these two sites, thus the two steps, okay? First, you need to set up your website, your company website. Second, you need to set up your LinkedIn profile. Okay, now some people might argue with me, you don't need either one of those. Here's what I can tell you, you might be able to get clients without those. But the problem is, if they do that search for Joe Smith at XYZ Logistics and you don't show up, you're not visible, you're not there, what happens is it's a huge red flag to that prospect. And you instantly lose all the credibility that you built during that initial call right? Because the fact is, is that people are used to being able to find what they need when they want online, especially with Google. It's the reason why they're, why they're Google, right? Why they become so popular, why they become so profitable, because they make it easy to access information. And if you're not part of that information when they want you to be, then you instantly lose credibility, okay? So the two steps that I want you to take the two very important steps that I want you to take before you start selling your freight broker or freight agency services is one, you got to set up your website. Now, it's not that hard, particularly if you're part of the freight broker bootcamp community. Secondly, I want you to set up your LinkedIn profile. That's not hard either because it's 100% free. It costs you zero. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the website first. The website does not need to be a thousand or two thousand or five thousand dollar website. It doesn't need to be that at all. As a matter of fact, if you are a member of Freight Broker Bootcamp, okay, and you're enrolled as a gold or a platinum member, either membership, you will get access to five, I think four or five WordPress templates of Freight Broker websites that you can use and you can take your logo out, you can change some images, and you can instantly have a website. Right, so we put these templates in place as a way to save you time and money. Matter of fact, with those templates, you can get your website set up, including your domain, including your hosting, including your website, everything set up for 50 to 100 bucks if you're already a member of Freight Broker Bootcamp. That's just a bonus of value add that we add into the training in addition to obviously the training itself, right? That's a tool that you can use to get your business up and running quickly, all right? So if you're a member of Freight Broker Bootcamp already, go to the website templates, follow the instructions. I show you the instructions on exactly how to get your domain, how to get your hosting, how to get your website set up with no technical knowledge, right? I show you that whole process if you're already a member of Freight Broker Bootcamp, okay? If you're not a member of Freight Broker Bootcamp, then you can either hire a developer, which could be expensive, um, you could try to design and get all your own images done, which could be even more expensive, but that's another option for you, okay? So that's the website option. As far as LinkedIn, it's super simple. If you do not have a LinkedIn profile, you're an, it's a huge mistake, huge mistake. You're a fool if you do not have a fully optimized LinkedIn profile. What I mean by optimized, when you go to set up your LinkedIn profile, it's free, right? It's kind of like a personal brand website. It's kind of like a resume, but we don't want it to look like a resume. We don't want it to sound like a resume. We don't want it to feel like a resume. What we want it to look like is more like a personal brand website. Your goal there is to simply, I, you know, get your 
prospect's attention because it's going to be optimized and customized specifically to their niche and to the niche that you're in and the business that you're in. And it's going to tell a story and it's going to build credibility, right? It's going, that's the entire goal of these two steps. Because here's what happens, as I said to you before, if that prospects goes to, go, goes to Google or any search engine to try to validate if you are legitimate or real or just to get some more information and you don't appear, if the first two sites that don't appear are your website and your LinkedIn profile, that's a problem. And that is going to set off a big red flag. You're going to lose all that credibility that you built up in that early conversation that you had. And chances are, if they don't find you, they're probably not going to reply to your future emails. They're probably not going to take your future calls because instantly they disqualified you as a part of this process. Okay. So this is how literally you can more than double your odds of success with a prospect if you just do these two simple steps up front, okay? So the two simple steps, set up your website. If you're a part of Freightbreaker Bootcamp, very simple, just use the templates, follow my instructions, and you can get it set up for 50 to 100 bucks very quickly, okay? Uh, your LinkedIn profile, super simple, right? You go to linkedin.com, you set up your profile, it's absolutely free, you can optimize that profile. You know, there's, there's tons of things online, Maybe I'll do another training where I'll talk about how freight brokers can optimize their LinkedIn profile uh, for sales and to, you know, to build, build credibility. I'll probably do a future training on that. If I do, you guys will get notified. But other than that, those are the two important things. And the biggest reason why is because if you don't appear in that Google search, you are going to instantly lose credibility. All right. So I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. It's super simple. Do it today do it tomorrow, get it done, get it done right away. For those of you that are curious about becoming a freight broker and you're not already part of the Freight Broker Bootcamp community, just go to FreightBrokerBootcamp.com. We've trained over 8,000 students, been in business over a decade, and uh, you know we've got tons of reviews and we offer a 60-day, 100% money-back guarantee. Okay, so it can't get any easier than that, right? We are well known to be the most cost-effective and comprehensive online freight broker training program. Now, if you're already a freight broker or you've already went through the course, or if you're already a freight agent, you've already went through the course and you want to be a part of the freight broker sales accelerator program, which is a brand new program that I'm going to be launching very soon. I launched the, the beta version of it a few months ago. The feedback was amazing. We're going to be relaunching that very soon here in June. And if you want to be a part of that Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program, which it's not a free program, it's a paid program, but I promise you it will be worth at least 10x whatever I charge for it, okay? Just to get on the wait list because the last time I opened this program up, it's sold in less than 24 hours, okay? If you want to be a part of this program, all you have to do is go to FreightBrokerBootCamp.com forward slash FB sales. Again, it'll be somewhere here up on the screen. Uh, freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash FB sales. You can get on the wait list. You'll be the first to get notified. Um, and when I release that, it's kind of first come first serve. So make sure you're on that wait list. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, have an awesome day. Now let's do the giveaway for those of you that need to take off because you got a busy schedule or something going on. I totally understand. I appreciate it. Um, uh, for those of you that are going to hang around for the Q&A and for the giveaway, in order to qualify for the giveaway, you have to be here live, okay? If you've already shared the stream, I'm going to give the shirt away here in about two minutes, okay? So hang tight. If you haven't shared the stream yet and you want a free t-shirt, you, you want a possibility to win a free t-shirt, the Freightpreneur t-shirt, just like the stream and share the stream. If you can't share the stream for whatever reason, if you can't figure it out, just on you on on Facebook, all you have to do is tag three of your friends in the comments. Tag three friends that you know that might be interested in this. My goal here is to create awareness. I want to build a bigger community that benefits everybody. And I do these free trainings every single week. And you know, I don't charge for these trainings, right? If you want to be a part of the Freight Burger Bootcamp membership where you have the full access 24/7 365 to the training, then you obviously have to, you know, you have to pay for that training, pay for that course. But this is a free training that I do every single week to help support not only the members, but as well as everybody else out there that's on their journey 
at one stage or another to try to become a freight broker or freight agent. So share the stream, share the stream guys. And I'm going to be giving this shirt away in about 60 seconds. And then we will dive into Q and A for those of you that are hanging around. Do not type your questions in yet. Okay. Hold your questions, right? Because if you don't hold your questions, they're going to get passed. I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to see the questions. So you got to hold your questions. Everybody who's sharing the stream, make sure you share. And then I'm going to dive into Q and A, but you got to wait on the questions. Otherwise I'm going to miss your question. All right. Got another drink. Uh, thank you, Cindy. Cindy Kane was one of the founding members of the Freight Broker Bootcamp Sales Accelerator, the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program. Um, and I appreciate the kind words. Um, the Sales Accelerator program is definitely a labor of love for me. It's something I should have put together over 10 years ago, um, but I finally did it. I took the time, we put it together <coughs> with a lot of great feedback from the members. We're gonna have, I think, what's gonna be an amazing experience for everybody who gets involved with that Freight Broker Sales Accelerator online program. So if you want to be a part of that, freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash FB sales. All right. So here we go. <clears throat> Thank you everybody who shared, who participated in the drawing. I'm going to give away the shirt now. So here we go. I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to right close my eyes and randomly I'm going to point my mouse at a winner and the winner is Mahmoud. Shahid, Mahmoud Shahid, he shared the stream. He's here live, so he wins the shirt this week. All right, so congratulations, Mahmoud. Here's all you have to do in order to qualify. Go to my Freight Broker Bootcamp Facebook page and message me. The Facebook page, just find Freight Broker Bootcamp Facebook page. I don't know where you're logging in from. And message me your full name, your full address, and your phone number and your size. Okay. One thing I forgot to mention, and I apologize. This is U S only for this giveaway. I can't ship these things international. So Mahmoud, I hope you're in the U S uh, I know we have students all over the country, but right now I'm just not shipping these shirts international. It's just kind of crazy. So it's U S only for the giveaway. I do apologize. I forgot to mention that. I usually do mention that. But, um, yeah, so all you have to do, Mahmoud is go to my Facebook page, Freight Burger Bootcamp. Message me your full name, address, phone number, and your size, and I will make sure I ship this out to you. This is a large, I'm 5'11", about 195 pounds roughly. So, you know, size varies accordingly. You know, if you're a little bit bigger, then get a little bigger size. If you're a little smaller, which I hope you are, uh, then get a little bit smaller size, okay? So make sure you message me, otherwise I can't send, send the shirt out, okay? All right, cool. So, who wants to do some Q&A? Let's hit some Q&A here. Who's got questions? I'm going to grab a drink while I'm waiting for some questions. Type your questions in the chat box and I will do my best to answer any questions you have. Now, I can't promise I have the answers, but if I don't, I will try to find them. Okay. That's my goal. Ah, Michelle Rainey got her t-shirt. She got it delivered over the weekend. Um, yeah, shoot me a picture of that, Michelle. I'd love to get that picture. That would be great. Shoot me an, uh, shoot me an email or you can send it through Facebook messenger. You probably can send it through Facebook messenger as an attachment or something. All right. So here's a question from, here's a question from Jose, from Jose. What happens when a carrier cancels on you when carrier already sent signed rate confirmation back? Okay, good question. So let me draw the picture for people that depending upon where you are in your education process of learning this. So as a freight broker, you get the shipment from your shipper and then you're gonna post it to the load boards, you're gonna call the carriers, you're gonna find a carrier that's gonna cover that load. You agree to the terms and the price of that load, you send them a rate confirmation, with all the details, they sign that rate confirmation and send it back to you, confirming and accepting that load. Now, one of two things is going to happen or can happen. Lots of things can happen, but here's a couple of scenarios. The one scenario is everything goes fine. They pick up the load on time. They deliver the load on time with no problem and they invoice you. You get paid by your shipper and everything goes well. 
The other scenario is what, what um, Jose is pointing out is that it does happen from time to time. A carrier that accepted your load and signed your rate confirmation that was going to pick up tomorrow, okay, for whatever reason, can't pick up your load tomorrow because let's say, for example, they didn't get unloaded at their last stop. Say they had a delivery tomorrow morning in Boston, Mass. They're supposed to pick your load up in the afternoon in Boston, Mass, but their truck didn't get empty. Well, if their truck didn't get empty in time, of course, they're not going to be able to pick up your load. So they have to cancel the load. So if they cancel the load, there's really no recourse or teeth if a, if a carrier cancels the load. So what you will have to do very quickly is recover that load. So you're not going to be able to go after them legally. You're not going to be able to sue them. You're not going to be able to penalize them in any way. That rate confirmation is a best efforts service agreement. Okay. So if they do cancel, um, then you need to, at that point, immediately let the sh either cover it immediately without any, without the shipper knowing, right. Which is the ideal situation. But in the event that they do cancel and you're not able to cover it, you need to let your shipper know immediately in regards to the update so that one of two things can happen. They can either give you some more time to cover it. They could move the pickup date time or they could put it out to their network and let somebody else cover it. Okay. So that's the basic framework of, of how it will work in the event that a carrier uh, cancels after signing a rate confirmation. I hope that makes sense. Good question though, Jose. Thank you. JT has a question. I have two questions. First, would it work just fine with a Facebook page instead of a website if we can't afford to create a website? Second, how can a single broker or agent handle multiple shippers if the average broker or agent can only move five loads a day? Uh, do they hire dispatch to take care of the trucking side? Okay, so the first question is, um, I, I don't think a Facebook page will replace a website, okay? Because number one, that Facebook page is probably not going to come up in the search results. Probably not, right? So what will come up is your website and what will come up is your LinkedIn profile, okay? So those would be the two that I would suggest. If you can't do the website, make sure you have the LinkedIn profile, right? Ideally, you have both, but I would focus on the website which we help you with if you're a member of Freight Broker Bootcamp, we'll give you the template, give you the instructions on how to get it set up very inexpensively, right? For under a hundred bucks. Um, and then beyond the website, it would be your LinkedIn profile. I do not think that most shippers are going to search Facebook. People in the shipping community don't search Facebook for providers. They search the web, they search LinkedIn. Facebook is more of a consumer driven platform LinkedIn is more of a B2B platform. So that's my suggestion. The second question you had is, um, how can a single broker or agent handle multiple shippers if an average broker or agent can only move five loads per day? Well, you're making the assumption that one shipper is going to move five loads a day with you. That's usually not the case. Let's say, for example, you had uh, one shipper that moved one load a day and you had a couple shippers that moved one load a week and then you had one big shipper uh, that moved multiple loads per day, right? The average broker agent can effectively cover and manage around five shipments. It depends on the amount of freight. Some can move a lot more. Some can move a lot less. Some freight is more complex than others. Now to try to move five heavy haul loads in a day would be very, very, very difficult, right? To try to move five one pick one drop van loads in a day, probably a lot easier, right? L less complex. So the level of complexity goes into that. But if you take the average of five a day and you start moving more than five a day, well, guess what? Here's the good news. If you're moving five loads a day at an average of 200 bucks a load, that's a thousand bucks a day that you're making. All you have to do in order to expand beyond that five loads is to hire a dispatcher or hire an operations person that can help you do all of that work to move that freight. Now you open up capacity where you can now maybe lose, move seven or eight or nine or 10 loads a day. So then you build your team of operations people. If you get five operations people and you're a broker, now all of a sudden you might be able to move 20 or 30 loads a day, depending upon the type of freight, depending upon the skill set, how well they're trained, 
and their capabilities. But ultimately, as a small broker, one of the easiest ways to expand your business is for you as that broker to be the lead in sales and you, you acquire the customers and then you have an operations team, which is a lot easier to train and a lot easier to manage. Um, and then you build up your capacity to be able to move those loads with operations people, dispatchers, you know, that sort of thing. So I hope that helps. Good question. Thanks, JT. Uh, Peter, yeah, some of them will, uh, particularly newer carriers. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, everybody, <laughs> everybody here and everybody who's already built a brokerage was new at some point. So they all had to move a load at some point, right? And so they, somebody gave them a chance and I'll be honest with you, man. I, I don't, it's really not as big of a deal as most people think. Um, people have a tendency to make a big deal out of it. If they get a little bit of rejection, it's just human nature. People like to whine about, oh, well, that carrier wouldn't take my load because their factoring company wouldn't factor it because we don't have a rating. Well, contact the factoring company and get a rating or build your credit up or do a quick pay or be creative or just call another carrier, find other carriers that will work with you. Okay. One of the things for sure that we know works is that newer carriers, I apologize for that, newer carriers are more likely to work with newer brokers, okay? And I think Yogi Goswami was nice enough in our Freight Broker Bootcamp community, right, our paid members community, members only community, to actually provide a list of brand new carriers that just got their MC numbers uh, as, a, as a viable option. I think there was hundreds, if not thousands of carriers in there, brand new carriers that just got their, their motor carrier authority um, that are much more likely to do business with a new broker. But again, I don't think it's nearly as big of a deal as most people make it out to be. Find another carrier. Once you get your first few loads, you'll be able to build up your credit and then it won't be an issue. Okay. But everybody's got to start somewhere. I started somewhere. Uh, you know, Franklin and Deckway started somewhere. Yogis Goswami started somewhere. Ila Lozano started somewhere. You know, everybody um, started somewhere. And so, yeah, they will give you an opportunity. It, it is a little bit harder at times when you're first starting out, but it's not unbearable and it's not something you can't overcome. All right, next question. Hmm, I'm not sure I understand this question. Tatiana. Dennis, if your brokerage is not in authority at the moment, would it be best to pay the back taxes and authorization or start a new entity since we didn't use the old entity at all? You know, Tatiana, that's a really hard question. That's not something I, I necessarily think I'm qualified to answer with the limited amount of information that I have. Um, you're asking a tax and legal question. I can't really give tax or legal advice, right? It's really hard. You got to seek a professional on something like that. Um, you know, I guess a lot of that's going to depend upon, you know, how difficult it is to clear up any of the back issues with the previous, with the other authority, if it's very expensive. I mean, it's going to be a cost benefit analysis, right? To set up a new broker authority, it's going to cost you X and take you Y amount of time in order to clear up the old broker authority. It's going to take you a, you know, cost you A and going to take B the amount of time. So you're going to have to do a bit of a cost benefit benefit analysis to figure out what the best way to go is. Okay. So I'm not quite sure. Hope that, hope that helps a little bit. Eric, you want me to give you the easiest answer? You want me to give you the answer that I of how I got my fuel surcharge when I first got started. I stole it from another broker. <laughs> and it was probably, it was probably, it was my fuel surcharge probably came from CH Robinson. Cause it doesn't matter what your fuel surcharge is, right? Um, as long as you have a standardized fuel surcharge. Now, what you are going to find out is that most shippers not most, a, a lot of shippers have their own fuel surcharge um, program where they have their own fuel surcharge that you're going to have to base all your rates on. If they want line haul per mile rates, okay, with fuel added on it, 
then you, then in a lot of cases, they're going to give you their fuel surcharge. And then you're going to have to base your rates based upon their fuel surcharge. If they don't, then a lot of shippers are going to be looking for an all in flat rate. Okay. So rather than doing freight plus fuel, they're going to ask for a flat rate. So Boston, Chicago, thousand bucks. Okay. Or 1100 or 1200, whatever you're going to charge them. Right. Um, as opposed to a, you know, as opposed to a line haul plus fuel. Now, some shippers will ask for line haul plus fuel, um, at which point you're going to need a fuel surcharge. Um, you know, as a part of Freightbreaker Bootcamp, I think we talk about all of that, freight uh, the fuel surcharge. But the easiest way to do it, honestly, is just to take a well-established brokerage and go get their fuel surcharge and make that your fuel surcharge because it doesn't matter if it's in percentage or cents because ultimately you're going to have to adjust your line haul based upon wherever it is, right? So the whole, if you factor in the whole rate, if you get the whole dollar value of the rate, say it's going to cost $1,000 to move from point A to point B, part of that is going to be the line haul per mile rate. Part of that is going to be the fuel surcharge. If you know the percentage or the cents per mile on the fuel surcharge, then all you're going to do is back out the, the per mile rate, okay? So I hope that helps. I know for some of you that's going to confuse you, but don't sweat it. Okay. Don't sweat it for most of you. A lot of that, that people will confuse you, but don't sweat it. You can provide all in rates. And if not ask the shipper for what their fuel surcharge is, if they have a fuel surcharge matrix and many of them will, and then you can just base your line haul rates on that. Hold on, I'm trying to find a question here. Okay, so uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Sorry, it scrolled up, scrolled up. All right. Oh boy. Okay. All right. So here's a question from, uh, Kane city cartel. So how much is the bootcamp membership? You can sign up as a gold member, which is a one year membership, full access, full support for one full year. It's only $185 one time, no recurring charge. You can sign up for a platinum lifetime membership with lifetime access, lifetime support for $389 one time charge. That's how much it costs for Freight Breaker Bootcamp. Very inexpensive. Again, we're well known to become the most, we're the most cost effective and comprehensive online freight broker training program. Again, been in business over a decade and we offer a 60 day 100% money back guarantee. I can't make it any easier than that, right? All right. So here's a question from uh, Michael Bell. Is it possible to start part-time? I work on a four on three off shift and would like to get my feet wet first before leaving my job. Uh, second question, should I start with a local niche or a nationwide niche? Okay. So Michael, um, first question, here's, here's the answer, whether it's four on three off or whatever the deal is, you'll have to make, be able to make calls to shippers and carriers during normal business hours, typically between eight and four, eight and five. At some point during that, you're going to have to be able to make calls to shippers and carriers. And that's typically Monday through Friday. Not much uh, prospecting goes on in the weekend. Um, not nearly as much covering a freight goes on in the weekend, although you can on Sunday sometimes cover a few loads or Saturday cover a few loads. But most freight management takes place Monday through Friday between, you know, mm -hmm. eight and five, eight and four, eight and five whatever your time zone is. Okay. So if you have time during that period to make calls to shippers and carriers, then you can start part-time. If you don't, then I wouldn't suggest that freight broker or freight agent is for you. Okay. Uh, a lot of people want to do this on weekends. It's just not going to work. Okay. I, don't, I just, I don't want you to waste your time or your resources or your money or get aggravated with me. If you think you can do this nights and weekends, it's probably not going to work. That's more of a hobby. Okay. Um, the second question you had is, should you start with a local niche or a nationwide niche? Uh, yes. I, I don't know. Whatever you want to start with. I can't tell you what niche to start with. 
Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you part-time or full-time. It doesn't matter what niche you start with. Uh, if you have a niche that you want to focus on and is more local to your region or to your, to your city or to your county or to your state, whatever you consider local, have at it. Absolutely. hundred percent. No problem. Local can be great because it's easier to get FaceTime. It's easier to go see them one-on-one. -on -one. It's easier to have lunch. It's easier, right? To communicate with them face-to-face, -face, which can be very valuable. Um, you know, to try to, you're not going to fly out. If you live in Buffalo, you're not going to fly down to Atlanta just to talk to a prospect. It doesn't make sense. It's not cost effective, right? That's why we use the phone. So, uh, use your best judgment. I don't necessarily have a right or wrong answer for that. Good question. Thank you. All right. So here's a question from Jose or Jose, how to start LTL when you do not have partials to have full or half loads. Okay. So here, just so you guys know, LTL stands for less than truckload, right? Less than a load, right? So most LTL, one pallet, two pallets, right? Type LTL, especially dry freight that goes on a van runs on what we call common carriers, uh, carriers like UPS or New England Motor Freight or any of the large, you know, FedEx Freight, right? Any of the large LTL carriers. And that is sm very small shipments, very small dollar values, and something that is very hard for freight brokers to make money at because it takes just as much time and energy to move a $150 or $250 LTL load than it does to move a $2,000 full truckload. But the thing is, if you make 10% of a, a $200 load, you're only making 20 bucks. If you make 10% of a $2,000 load, you're making 200 bucks. So most freight brokers uh, don't focus in on LTL, traditional dry LTL that goes on common carriers, unless they have special pricing agreements in place already. They've got a lot of, they've got a lot of history in LTL. They understand the rate you know, uh, they understand the rating, they understand, um, you know, the technology for tendering and doing all this stuff online and automation for LTL. Um, so I wouldn't, I would strongly not suggest focusing in on LTL as a brand new broker, unless you have a lot of experience. Now you mentioned something about trying to consolidate multiple LTL loads into a full truckload or multiple partials into a full truckload. That's possible. Um, but again, you're going to, there's going to be some, definitely some more logistics involved in there beyond just covering the load, because now you're going to have to cross dock. You're going to have to, you're going to have to get the local freight. So let's say, for example, you got five customers and they each give you, you know, three pallets a day, and then you're going to consolidate those into a load. And then that's going to ship out on a full truck load. And then they're going to do like a milk cart run with multiple drops. Um, that's possible. People do that, but it's a lot more complex. It's very difficult to start there as a new broker. Okay. Because again, now you've got to consolidate that. Sometimes you're going to need a cross dock. Sometimes you're going to need a warehouse. Sometimes you're going to need that. So you need to have significant experience in and around that niche. If you're going to make that your niche, that would be my only suggestion. Otherwise try to find some sort of full truckload, um, that you can, Cut, that you can focus in on some niche where you can start with full truckload. And then after you have full truckload customers and you start seeing that they are running partials or large LTL, maybe you can dip your toe in then and figure out a way to, you know, to monetize that service, the customer and monetize it at the same time. That would be my suggestion, Jose. Yeah. Uh, JLBM asks, with your program, do we get a list from our area of companies we can call to try to get business? I would know, I wouldn't know where they were at. We only want to do local, no long distance. Okay. So, so here's the answer. I have a database, all of our, we just updated our shipper database, right? So our shipper database is us based and is over a hundred thousand shippers. Now, some are, you know, many they're spread out through all the States. Okay but I can't guarantee that they're going to be local in your city, right? But the, with over a hundred thousand shippers in the database, right? Chances are there's going to be a good amount of them that are local to you. In my area, 
Um, I just in my Buffalo area, I think there's well over a thousand, right? Just in that database. So in a local area, you're definitely going to have a bunch of leads that if you're a gold member or a platinum member, you get free access to that. And we literally just updated that entire database. It cost me a fortune to update it, but I did update the database. So it has current data and company. So the companies that have went out of business, most of them have been renewed or removed. Uh, and then the data, the, the company websites, the addresses, the phone numbers, all that information is up to date. So I hope that helps. Good question. Okay, so Sam asks, what is a comm check? Okay, so a comm check is a tool that's used to pay a carrier or provide an advance to a carrier or a driver. So let's say it's, it's basically a comm check is a series of numbers that you're gonna provide. It's a specialized finance tool that allows you as a broker to transfer money to a driver while they're on the road. So if they needed to, if they had a lumper fee and they needed the 200 bucks, you'd be able to send them a comm check with that. They would be able to pull that money for, go to a truck stop and get that money pulled down so they could pay the lumpers. Or if you need to do a fuel advance for a driver, you could give them a comm check and they could go use that comm check to get fuel so that they could pick up your load. It's, it's basically a financial tool that allows you to rapidly send money to drivers and carriers, right? It's a specialized transportation tool geared towards sending money uh, to drivers and carriers. I hope that helps. So Stacy, here's a good question. Thank you. How can I research shippers by who arrives at the ports? Uh, it's almost impossible to uh, to find a database that's going to tell you who's arriving at the ports. Okay, it just just doesn't it doesn't exist. Okay, um, so but with the shipper database in the Freight Broker Bootcamp program, if you're a member of Freight Broker Bootcamp, you can go into that shipper database and there's a there's an option there where you can check for import export. Right, if you click import export, these are shippers that it'll it'll only filter through shippers that have identified themselves as doing import and export or export, one of the two, okay? So you'll filter out everybody who doesn't do import export or you'll filter it with people that have identified saying that they do import export. Now that's not gonna be the only people that do it, but these are shippers that have identified they do import export. So if you're part of the Freight Burger Bootcamp community or you're a paid member, log in, go to the shipper database and you can then filter by import export leads. Um, if you're not, then you can sign up and get access to that. I mean, the database, guys, the shipper database alone is worth 10 times what I charge for the membership. If you went to buy that database, it would cost you 10 times what I charge for the, for the membership. If you were going to get any good data, right? If you were going to try to get that data. So the membership alone, the, the shipper database alone is worth more than the membership. Okay. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense. All right, I'm going to answer this question again for the 7,000th time. And I know you haven't answered that, asked this question 7,000 times, but I get this question all the time. Um, Uber is not really affecting the freight brokerage industry as a whole on a large scale, in my eyes, very much at all. Because number one, um, they have yet to gain any real market share um, in the industry, unlike they said they were going to completely disrupt the industry and get rid of freight brokers. That hasn't happened. I've been hearing that same story for 20 years, just so you know. Okay. I started uh, 18 years. I started my freight brokerage in 2003. I've been hearing that story for 18 years. Um, but right now, best, they, they, and, and they have not, and they're not profitable. They're losing money hand over fist. So here's how it's going to work. They're losing money in a way to try to accumulate customers, but eventually in order to make money, they're going to have to increase their cost. And when they increase their cost, they're going to be in line with everybody else because you can't lose money and stay in business for long, right? Eventually you run out of money 
and, um, and you get poor service because you have poor rates. So that's one dynamic. The other dynamic is um, best case scenario for Uber and these other ones is they become just another large broker. But here's the cool part. The transportation logistics freight industry is so big and continues to grow year over year based upon population growth, consumption, development, innovation, global logistics, global globalization of products and services. They, it doesn't matter. Guys, I promise you, um, they're just going to be another big broker. And I love competing against big brokers, assuming that they get to that status of like a CH or something like that, which they haven't come even close to yet. So I'm not worried about these digital brokers. The other thing is, is you now have technology available to you that will allow you to compete with those guys because now it's easier for you to get rates. It's easier for you to move freight. It's easier. The whole process is easier than when I started back in 2003. I spent over a million dollars developing my own software just so we could function properly because the software sucked so bad back in 2003. Now the software is awesome. Right? I mean, the software now does everything for you. There's tons of automation built into it. There's freight software that has AI built into it. I mean, everything technologically has gotten a lot better. So it's even the playing field between small brokers and large brokers. So that's the short answer. Um, I'll be honest, I wouldn't sweat it. Um, you know, I, I haven't seen any real significant impact uh, the, thus this far. Okay, hope that helps. I need to record that so I never have to say it again because I'm sick of answering that question. Nothing personal, insight, read, or read. Uh, all right, last question here. So here's a question from Joshua. Dennis, I'm a trucker and looking to move into being a freight agent. Would you suggest I have finished your freight burger boot camp classes? Uh, it depends on your comfort level, Joshua. Um, you know, the Freightburger Bootcamp class shouldn't take you that long. Usually people complete that course over a two to four week period of time, usually somewhere in the realm of four to eight hours of studying and they're able to complete the information. Now, some people want to read it or view it or, or go through it more than once. That depends upon you. It depends upon your level of, of comfort in starting to make calls. Have you identified your niche? You know, have you, do you have a list of prospects that you're going to go after? Are you ready at that point? If you've got those things in play and you're comfortable, start making some calls because the fact is, you know, you can't steal second with your foot on first. Eventually you're going to have to make some calls and everybody's bad before there's good, before they're good. So if you're ready and you're not finished with the course, feel free. You can always complete that course over time. But you know, if you're in a rush, then do that. If you're not, then finish the course. That would be my suggestion. I'll do one more question. I'm scrolling to try to get a good question here. Okay, so Tiffany asks, what paperwork do I need to bring an agent on to my brokerage? So if you're a broker and you're trying to hire an agent, right, what you're going to need is you are going to need a broker uh, agent agreement, which we provide, uh, you know, a template. Uh, a version of that in our Freight Burger Bootcamp program, along with all the other contracts. So you're going to need that. You're going to need a um, an I nine, which is something you're going to need to show that they're uh, you're you're going to need their tax ID number. You're going to need something their tax ID. And you're going to need their Social Security number, or if they have an LLC, their EIN number, because you're going to need to be able to issue them payments, right, as well as a 1099 for their income that they earn. Um, those are the biggest things you're going to need, right? You probably are going to have to have some sort of basic training for your software or your systems. You're probably going to need some sort of a credit app so that they can have a credit app filled out by their shippers so you can approve credit. So those are some of the basic things you're going to need in order to bring on an agent. Broker agent agreement, 
uh, their tax information so you can send them checks and issue them a 1099. And uh, that's the basics. It doesn't take a lot. So I hope that helps guys. Listen, I hope you guys enjoyed the training. If you guys are looking for help in sales and based on these questions that I'm getting, a lot of you need help in sales, right? You're looking for help in sales. I am going to be releasing the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator very, very soon. It's definitely going to, it's not going to happen in June. It's going to happen in early July. I haven't been able to get it done. I'm hustling as hard as I can to get it done. Uh, it's going to release in July. And again, it's not going to be a free program, but it's taking that piece of my brain where I talk about sales and I talk about sales strategy and processes. And what I do is I take it and transplant it in your head to give you those skills and the confidence you need in order to start doing that outreach and start getting clients, right? Start getting shippers. Uh, again, it's not going to be a free program. It's something that I'm going to charge for. I don't, I haven't finalized the cost yet, but it will be worth more than 10 X, whatever I charge for it. If you want to get on the wait list, because I sold out in 24 hours last time, um, you have to go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash F B sales. All right. So that's if you're a broker or an agent and you're looking for sales specific training. If you have not yet started as a freight broker or you're, you haven't gotten a lot of training or you're just at step one, that may or may not be for you right now, but Freight Broker Bootcamp definitely is designed to help walk you through that process of going from zero to startup and to start getting your first few shippers and a little bit of cash flow. If you want a more advanced sales strategies and tactics and tools, then you're going to go into the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. So I hope that helps. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys next week, Monday at noon, like every week. Um, appreciate all the shares. Appreciate all the love. Appreciate everybody showing up. Have an awesome week and we'll talk next week.